How are y'all doing? This is Reverend Dick. This is a video where I'll try to offer as little personal input as possible, as I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube before I even got started properly. This subject is one that upsets me greatly personally, and I wish all the ill in the world upon the people involved. I wish I could say it took me days to find these articles, but sadly it took me all of five minutes. You all already know who these people are, and if not, the last article will tell you in black and white. <coughs> Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Links to the articles and social media is in the description. In a police report, boys played soccer with living ducks. The dog owner saw that three teenage boys looked like they were playing soccer with living ducks. When he photographed them, they threatened to kill his dog, but he could get out of the place. Now the police have got his photographs. It was on Monday, September 9th, that the man was out walking in the Trollhue area when he saw three teenage boys who... fucking Google in their bad translation when they attacked the ducks. They kicked several ducks, and the man saw how the kickers uh, met a number of times, says Mats G. Odestol, who is a municipal police officer in Nieslov. According to the local newspaper, it looked like the youth were kicking football with the ducks. The man took uh, photographs of the three young men, and then they immediately became menacing. At least two of them went against him and said that they would kill a dog if he went to the police or did not disappear from the scene. Says Mats. The man left the scene and contacted the police directly. He did everything right. It was great that he photographed because now we have good opportunities to find the perpetrators. This type of crime is upsetting at everyone. Mats Giordestol notes. At the same time, he thinks it was right to not confront the young people. Then it could have been even worse, thanks to this private citizen. We have a very good hope of finding the perpetrators, explains Mats G. Odestol. Furthermore, this is the same part of Sweden, same uh, county. In Vellinge, police suspects that rat poison was placed out to kill family dogs. When the homeowners were out on their plot, they saw boxes full of bit mar bite marks turned out to be rat poison, which someone probably put out to kill the family dogs. It was Friday, September 6th that the family made the scary discovery. On the site were two small cats, chewed, but without anything other than the contents had la leaked out. According to the report, it is a question of boxes with rat poison, says Tina Olson, who is a press informant at the police in Trelleborg. The incident has been reported to the police as the spread of poison or infection, the destruction of poison, a crime that can lead to years of imprisonment. This is the second time in a couple of weeks that attempts to poison dogs have been reported to the police in Vellinge. On August 25th, a family member reported that their dog had been poisoned in connection with their home. To try to save the dog's life, the wet went to the family and gave first aid. It is unclear if that dog managed to survive. This time the dogs managed thanks to the rat poison containers being intact despite being partially broken. <coughs> if they had eaten the rat poison, it would have required only a few minutes for them to die as the substance gives them severe internal bleeding. This one, I, uh, I can't really show the pictures on YouTube. At least that is my understanding of the TOS. So if you want to see how this poor cat looked after it was treated horribly by people, uh, you can click on the link. A cat named Elvis was shot with multiple shots. The owner can't understand how anyone could do that. Bloody and without being able to move the legs on the right side, the five-year-old male cat managed to rush home. When he was examined at the animal hospital, 
Two bullet holes were found, one in the neck where the bullet still remained, and one in the spine where the bullet passed out. Someone must have been standing right above him and shot. I don't understand that you can do such a thing, says Eric Anderson, the owner of the cab. It was a 9.30 Friday evening that the family suddenly heard Elvis screaming outside the front door. He usually sounds a lot when he catches any mouse that he wants to show. That was my first thought, so I just opened the door to avoid catching uh, the mouse into the house, says Eric Anderson. Outside, Elvis was bloody and limp on his right. When we let him into the house, he rushed in, says Eric, who, in belief that the cat was hit uh, by a car, drove him directly to the animal hospital. Once there, Elvis was x-rayed, and this showed no fractures in his back. In contrast, bone chips appeared in one of the neck vertebrae, and we started to wonder if he had been bitten. But then the veterinarian examined, uh, he found a bullet that remained in his throat. A total of two bullet holes were found, one in the neck where the bullet remained, and one at the spine where the bullet passed out. According to the veterinarian, the bullet was of an air rifle type, but of a larger cal caliber. We therefore suspect that there is some sort of weapons where you can shoot multiple shots without reloading. After the wounds had been cleaned and repurposed, Elvis had to come back with his uh, to his home, but it is still unclear if it will be restored. He gets morphine every eight hours and penicillin to prevent infections. Unfortunately, he still can't move the right side properly. Only time can tell if there is any permanent nerve damage or if it all goes away when the swelling has subsided. We must now take one day at a time and see how he recovers. If he will be able to walk and have a valuable life to live, says Erica. The incident has been reported to the police and the family who has also posted information about the incident on the local Facebook page uh, for the municipality where they live. Based on what we have been told, Elvis is not the first. Over the years, many cats in the area have been affected by the same fates as Erica. In Hultsfried, men kicked hedgehogs to death. During the nights until Saturday, two men have killed two hedgehogs at the railway station in Hultsfried. This is reported in Eastern Småland newspaper, local newspaper. It's behind a paywall, which is why I use this as a news source. According to the person who called the police, the incident happened at circa 12.30 at night. Then two men should have gone and kicked two hedgehogs and then left them seemingly lifeless. Police spokesman Robert Luffel tells News Today that no patrols had time to get to the scene at the time. On the other hand, a preliminary investigation has been initiated with the criminalization of animal cruelty. And just to drive the point home, when I tell you that you all know who's behind it, and this is just to make sure that even the thickest person can understand what I'm saying. And this is actually an article that I'm revisiting from before I bother to uh, locate the headset that I'm using right now. This is from an old video. Animal Protection Organization, Immigrant Dense Areas, Behind the Increase in Animal Plagues, uh, Cruelties Against Hedgehogs. Animal friends in Nehu have seen an increase in reports of hedgehogs and other wild animals that are suffering. According to Chairman Annika Hoeberg, animal cruelty occurs primarily in immigrant dense areas. Swedish Radio P4 Jan Chöping was the first to report on the matter. The animal friends in Nehu warned that children and young people try to spit hedgehogs and use them as football. And they spit, they mean they impale them with sticks. Other wild animals, such as hares, have also been exposed to this. Uh, News Today called President Annika Hoeberg to find out what the increase in the notifications is due to. It's hard to say, but 
There are some areas. I imagine that in the areas where it happens, it might be a thing to do so. Since then, there has been a lot on social media. Now that the swans and cats and hares have been cut, and then it spreads, I can imagine. If you are a little screwed up, then you probably think it's a cool thing. What can you say about these areas? These are immigrant dense areas, unfortunately. This is uh, typical Swedish cognitive dissonance. Anything that is related to facts is uh, unfortunate and something that um, you cannot speak about openly in any productive sort of way. But I'll, um, I'll go on. Somehow we have it with us in the spinal cord and our morals that you do not, uh, that you do not act uh, cruel towards animal in that way. Previously, we used to write notes in different languages and tell them exactly, and it was a lot of hedgehogs, hedgehogs that were in danger. We were out in schools talking about what our laws say and what not to do with animals and so on. Says Seneca Huberi. So there is some difference in how animals are handled in Sweden and in other countries. We have quite good animal welfare legislation here in Sweden that we are used to and grew up with. And it is not so in all the other countries, unfortunately. There, the schools have something to act upon, I think. Annika Kroberi says that she herself had to move hedgehogs from the affected areas for preventive purposes. They lay their young now in July, August, and then we have tried to move them before they have put their young and put them in other areas where they are safe. Other wildlife has also been exposed, but it is mainly hedgehogs that are affected. Uh, young hares is a little harder to detect and so on. Hedgehogs have the habit of arriving on lawns and in woodlands and the like, so they are easier to access. In the past, the friends of animals in Nehu have often been out in schools and informed. Now we haven't had it in a while, and we feel that maybe there is something we need to start up again. We make small information sheets for the children and tell them how to handle them, what you can and cannot do. I think that's pretty important. What one must do is uh, to not torment them simply. Yes, exactly. For us... It is so obvious in some way, but it is not for everyone, actually. And there is the secret for us. Now, there is so many things that I would actually like to say upon the subject matter. So many things that goes through my head when I think about these people. But I'm going to refrain from doing it because, as I said early on, I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube before I even get started. And it's more important that you people get to hear exactly what not to do, which is follow the Swedish example. So yeah, there you have it. This is a very short video upon animal cruelty here in Sweden and if I sound detached it's because I had to detach myself because I'm uh, boiling on the inside in all honesty links to the articles and to social media will be in the description have a good one this has been Reverend Dick bye bye